Hello candidates. Uh, today we are going to look at application of fractions. By the time we, we apply fractions to our daily lives, we have covered a lot in terms of fractions. We have added fractions, subtracted fractions, multiplied fractions, divided fractions, used the body mass in a fraction. So after that we can now start applying fraction to our daily life. Today, in our first example, we are going to look at a, B, and C as contributors to a particular company. They wanted to start a company. So the question goes, A, B, and C contributed to start a company. A paid in terms of fraction 3 out of 10 of the cost, and B in terms of fractions contributed 5 out of 10 of the cost. Then C, this contribution was not given to us. Our first question is, what fraction did C contribute? When the three of them contribute to start a company, what they bring together into a pool is taken to be a whole, one whole number. So if this is our one whole number, we are taking away the fraction Z contributed by the two, A and B, such that we can get the fraction for C. A, when you look at our question, a contributed 3 out of 10. So A contributed 3 out of 10 together with B contributing 5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. So one whole number which they pulled together, take away the fraction for the two, we shall get the fraction contributed by the third person who is C. Now, one whole number take away, we are going to handle the fraction is in the brackets first, and you are well aware that these two fractions have the similar denominator. When fractions have a similar denominator, we normally add the numerator. So we shall have 3 plus 5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. To simplify this, we shall have one whole number take away. What do we get? I think 8 out of 10. When we reach here, it will be easier for us now to subtract. However, the one whole number in terms of fraction is going to be uh, determined by the denominator of the fraction we are subtracting. So if the denominator is 10, our one whole will be turned into 10 out of 10. Then we take away 8 out of 10. Uh -huh. The denominator is the same, which is 10. So we shall subtract again the numerator, 10 take away 8, and we shall finally get 2 out of 10 as C's contribution. Therefore, C, C contributed, C contributed, C contributed which fraction? Uh, 2 out of 10. We can write it there. C contributed 2 out of 10. C contributed 2 out of 10. This fraction can be left as it is, or we can reduce it. Why? Because you see we can have a similar, uh, a similar factor that can reduce 2 and, and 10, which is 5. If we are to reduce by 2, we shall get 1. So by 2, we shall get 5. So uh, the, 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 the factor that has reduced is not 2, but I mean it's not 5, but it is 2. So that fraction can either be 2 out of 10 or 1 out of 5 after reducing. After reducing. So that is the fraction if we are to answer the first question. Our second question on the same number, which we can call Roman 2, is if we see contributed 30,000, what was their total contribution? If we see contributed 30,000, what was their total contribution in terms of money now? In terms of fractions, we have seen C contributed 2 out of 10 or 1 out of 5 after reducing. Then we are answering solution. Solution to Roman 2. Solution to Roman 2. Uh, if we are to summarize this in a table form, in a table form, in a table form, 
in a table form. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, this is A. This can be B. This can be C. And uh, this can be their total. This can be their total. If this is A, this is B, and this is C, then we can call this total contribution, probably. In terms of fraction, A, A had, A had 3 out of 10. B had 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10. Then C, we have just discovered that C has 2 out of 10. Or... 1 out of 5. But because the ones that are in my tables are all having denominator 10, I would prefer taking the unreduced fraction. Then the total will be 10 out of 10 in terms of fraction or one whole. So in terms of money, who of them has money? Who of them has money? C contributed 30,000. So when we look at C, C in terms of money has 30,000. So under C, we are having 30,000 shillings. These other ones we don't know. Even the total, we don't know. Now, it is going to be easier for us to use two methods here. We are having the contribution of C in terms of fractions and in terms of money. Some people normally use algebra if they want to find the total cost as the question goes. If C contributed 30,000 shillings, what was their total contribution? We are using this column which is full with a fraction and amount. So, since we don't know the total amount, but we know that C uh, contributed two tenths of the total, and that amount is equivalent to 30, we can use an assumption. In terms of using algebra, method one, method one, let the total, the total contribution, let the total contribution be K. Using this algebra method, we shall say now two tenths of K is equivalent to 30,000 shillings of K, which is the total contribution, such that this fraction helps us uh, to find, uh, together with the money, helps us to find the total contribution. So 2 out of 10 of means multiplication is multiplied by this, will give us 30,000 shillings. When we multiply the numerators alone, which will give us 2K, 2 times K is 2K out of 10, is equal to 30,000 shillings. Now we have one denominator which is 10, which we must multiply on both sides if we are to find the value of k. So we have 10 multiplied into 2k out of 10, which is as good as 30,000 uh, times 10. So our 10 will go with a 10 once, once, and our 2k will be as good as 30,000 multiplied by 10. Um, 30,000 multiplied by 10. And then I can push to this side where I have where I have 2k being divided by 2 which is equivalent to 30,000 times 10. The whole thing divided by 2. So our k alone is as good as by, 10, by 2 once, by 2 into 30, 15, into 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So I'll be having 15,000 multiplied by 10. So k alone will give us 150,000 shillings. That is using method 1. Using method two, method two, using method two, we need the fraction for C as well as the money for C. 
such that we can use our method of parts. Our method of parts. So if we have uh, our fraction for C, fraction for C as, as 2 out of 10, we shall now use parts uh, and say two parts, our two parts, because this is, is having an equivalent of 30,000 in terms of money. Two parts are equivalent to, two parts are equivalent to 30,000. 30, two parts are equivalent to 30,000 shillings. Then one part represents or is equivalent to 30,000 divided by, by 2, which means one part will be representing uh, by 2 as by 2, 15, 0, 0, 0 cross will give us 0, 0 there, will be equivalent to 15,000 shillings. Then, what was the denominator on our fraction? 10. Therefore, 10 parts. 10 parts will represent uh, 15,000 multiplied by 10, which will give us 150,000 shillings. So, what did A, B, and C contribute all together? They contributed 150,000 shillings to start a company.